What does scripture say about inflation and what prophetic insights are out there for us? I'm Clint Surratt, Senior Pastor and CFO at Kurt Landry Ministries. And here with me, as always, is Rabbi Kurt Landry. How's it going today, Rabbi? Hey, Clint, listen, I am so pumped and I'm so excited about this that you're hosting yes. and interviewing, talking about a subject that really affects my generation, your generation, and all the generations. This inflation, it's yeah. its like money is evaporating. You know, we go to the gas station, we go to the grocery store, but I think it's really important for people to understand, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things, you know, shall be added. All other things yes. shall be added. And you know, the Lord is not concerned about inflation. The Lord will meet all of our needs, but we need to align ourselves with God's ways. So I know Absolutely. you did some homework on some scriptures and things. So if you'll just ask and I'll try to respond in a real practical way. And uh, I'm just pumped and excited. Okay. Thank you for uh, hosting this. Yes. And thank you for uh, being able to talk on this subject. I think it hits home with a lot of us. We've either felt it or seen it as Rabbi was saying. And so really the question today that I really want to start out with, as we know, inflation is rising, it's continuing to go up. How as Christians do we posture ourselves and how does Christians do we handle this what is at hand right now? Okay, first thing, we're going to have to discipline ourselves, Clint, with what we say. And the Lord rebuked me on this. Of all things, we're going to uh, Tom and Jane Hammond's church, you know, <laughs> uh, a totally a prophetic faith hub in uh, Santa Rosa Beach. And I, we're getting gas. And, and I went to get gas and I was complaining to myself and to Christy about the gas. And the Lord said, you can't say that. Wow. You're getting ready to go yeah. and you're going to prophesy. You're in a meeting with people. And, and he said, you can't go and prophesy faith when you're speaking death over, over yourself. He said, D have I provided for you? My gas was $100. And he said, have I provided that $100 for you? And, the, and I said, yes, Lord. So I actually repented at the gas station. Wow. And then I went in the car and repented to Christy. And then we repented together before we went in because the scripture says we are snared by the words of our mouth. And so it's something to where we have to really be more thankful at the grocery store when the two bags are much more than before and the gas, the real practical things. But also we have to remain in a humanitarian way that uh, Megan was sharing with me that that some people's households are up like seven hundred dollars a month. I mean, that's brutal. Yeah. That's really brutal. So let's let's talk about how do we get relief from the Lord? How do we get a financial increase? How do we get to a solution in this? Because obviously we're not gonna we're not able to fix the country, but how do we fix our households? Yes. And I would love to ask the question because you know we we live in this world, right? But we're not of this world. And so for for us as Christians, obviously we believe in sowing. We believe in giving to the Lord. And so talk and walk me through that of, of in this season, as, as tight as some people may feel like their finances are, is this a time to continue to sow and to sow more than ever before? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, a little brief history on Christy and I. Uh, we got, when I got saved, we were very well off. And, and then we went into full-time ministry and then we went completely broke. I'm talking <laughs> having to get groceries from the neighbors, yeah. okay? And so I've been on all sides of this. So it's not like, oh, he's always had, you know, uh, uh, provision. So, but it's so interesting. I, I was preparing, I'll be transparent. Okay. I, I'm preparing today to, to meet with you. I knew you were gonna be prepared because I know you. And so I said, okay, I'm gonna Google this <laughs> at, about seed time and harvest because I need some stuff because this is really about that. Yes. And, and of all things, this is what came up. Look at this, this is amazing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> our own. To, I'm talking to myself. I'm going, are you kidding me? And, and it's excellent about seed time and harvest. But here's one of the first things on the article that we wrote. And gosh, this was, uh, uh, you know, in June, but it says often expecting a harvest without planting a seed. Yeah, that's good. I mean, you got to have a seed in the ground. So this is not a time to cut back. You know, uh, you got to meet Pastor Steve Gussler, who is now yes. our life coach, but also a consultant to Kurt Landry Ministries. He's my first pastor. He actually water baptized Megan and I, and, um, and his dad owned a restaurant. 
and a pancake restaurant in Oregon. And, and Steve always taught us as his disciples. Anyone that was under Steve Gutzler knows his dad always said this, when in need, plant a seed. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Say that again. Yeah. yeah say, good. When in need, plant a seed. That was Steve's dad. So we need to understand that a seed is an investment in God's kingdom. So what Christy and I have done is we have done sacrificial giving to get a bigger harvest. Yeah. Because if you need more, I, I, I know this, this doesn't sound right, but you actually need to sow more in inflation to get more yes. because you need more yes. finance. Yes. And just uh, just as, as, as you're saying that, it was just a few months ago back in the spring, my wife was telling me, she said, Clint, we need to go above the tithe and now we need to start sowing, uh, just putting the seed out there because in this time, we've got to get seed out there. We can't expect harvest if we don't have seed. So yes, we, I, that was something that Karen and I felt strong about in the spring. And, uh, and we have seen the Lord be faithful and true to those seeds that are already been planting in the ground. So that's something that we're doing also. Yeah. So it's really kind of battling in the opposite spirit. One of the the other thing I, that I do is what it alms. Okay. You okay. know, there's different types of sewing and, and, you know, I've, we've got a book on, on biblical finance and, uh, uh, you know, ties and offering. But one of the things that, uh, my personal ministry that I love and, and Megan can tell you, I've done this my whole time that I've been saved is, um, I will see somebody suffering mm -hmm. and I can tell, and because I remember when I had to do this and where you're having to go to your child and say, OK, we're going to have to put this back on the shelf that click, click. And then you're they're looking at it and they don't have enough and they have to put it back. Wow. I, I, I can't take it. I can't take it. Yeah. Mm. And I'm usually sitting there. The Lord's blessed us in this season, you know, all seasons up and down. And so that's an alms and you get a chance. And I usually will put my hand on the shoulder of the child and say, please put that back. And then I will put like a hundred dollar bill down. And I said, now this is more than enough, but I want you to keep the change because wow. I've been there, but I want you to know I'm blessing you in Jesus name. He's faithful. So you need to do that during this time. Yeah. This is a time of a, a great harvest of souls, but it's also the Lord is looking for those who will be Jesus with flesh on it and those who are sowing seed. I don't think people realize that, that in Malachi chapter three, it says that when you sow your tithes and your offering yes. and you're blessed, he, first of all, he opens up the windows of heaven. Yes. So you know what to say, what to do, what to think, and you have the plans. And then he says, he fills your barns. And then he says also, he says that no harm shall come nigh thy dwelling. So you've got protection. Then you've got favor uh, with the nations. And, and so, I mean, all these things. So the greatest thing about in inflation is that I really think it's going to make a lot of people in lack mad, but it's going to make you joyful. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And, and I know that you and Carrie and the girls have that. But what is for you at, at your age asking like me, and you're really asking Christy and I, cause we, we, this is how we function, but uh, you know, we've gone through, Christy and I've gone through some really um, tough times and persecution. It's, it's amazing to, you know, be a part of the Aliyah, raising hundreds of millions of dollars for airplanes for our Jewish people <laughs> in the early nineties to raising hundreds of millions of dollars to wondering to having to call her parents and ask for money for dog food for our dog. And the parents aren't saved. And they said, well, see, we told you your God wouldn't provide. And that, that's a true testimony. I wouldn't say it except they've gone, gone home to be with the Lord. So, so, so here's the thing is, if, if there was one question your generation wanted to ask ours, what would that question be? I think uh, relating to this, I think people want to know uh, that it's real. Like we, we, we hear stories. We, how do I know it's real for us? We hear it with you and Christy. We hear it with your stories and that builds faith. But how can we know that if we do this and, and we sow into this, like the experience, I guess, for their own families, for their own children, how, what's your best advice to say, uh, if they ask you that question, if our generation does, what, how, the proof's in the pudding, I know, but what, what is that that you would tell somebody to say to that question, 
I need that experience. Okay, so let's talk to them. And I want to, he's asking, and now I'm, 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 t- I'm sharing with you. Here's the most unusual place in the Bible in Malachi chapter three. You can read it. And the Lord says, try me or test me in this. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing, there'd not be room enough to receive it. Try me or test me, do it. Can, if you can afford to do this, I want you to, I want you to sow a hundred dollars and then I want you to speak this word. And if you can't do 100, do 10. It doesn't make yeah. any difference on the number. I just want you to sow. But I do want you to say this. I want you to decree when you sow that seed. Go ahead. You'll see it there at CLM you'll, uh, forward slash donate. But when, when you donate, I want you to pray this. Say, Father God, your word says in Malachi, try me yes. or test me. And I'm doing it now. And I need to see that this works. What Clint's saying, I need to see it. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, I'm sowing this seed by faith. You're sowing it into good soil. Sow that $100, sow that $10, whatever it is, $5. It's not, and then, but be awake and watch for the return to come. And then when the return comes, thank the Lord and then immediately give him 10% back and be sensitive around your neighbors and your family and your community when you see somebody in need then sow the seed. And remember, when in need, sow the seed. Anyway, I want to thank you so much for being a part of this. And Clint, thank you. Yes, thank you. What a wonderful time. Yes. And God bless you. And may the Lord bless you and provide for you exceedingly abundantly as as one new man and these prophetic pieces. The piece is this. He wants to provide for you above all you could ask or think. Let him do it. Let God answer your needs according to his riches and glory in Yeshua's name. God bless you. We love you. See you next time.